So Adobe just released this new software called 3D Stager, and if you've ever used Dimensions, it's literally the same exact thing. They they reskinned a few features here and there and gave it a dark mode, but uh, for the most part, it's the same thing. So if you're an absolute beginner though, and you, that meant nothing to you, you could, if you wanted to start, you could go ahead and create new. And this on your left is essentially your library of assets to pick from. So you could pick whatever thing you wanted. In my case, I'll take like a coffee cup and I want to just put a logo on here. I, I downloaded it online. I'll put a link in the description, but I'll put a logo there and then I want to have a realistic scene to make it seem like a real photo. But what I've seen with a lot of mockups and people trying to make just graphics on objects is that it looks fake really quickly because either A, the perspective's wrong or B, they, in making like a 3D scene, they don't really know what they're doing with the materials and the textures and whatnot. And so things just look bad quick. And so to avoid that, I think the best way is to instead use a backlight image. So these are like just a, a lot of images that come with Adobe. But if you scroll up, these are like actual photos. So I want something rustic and kind of fitting for my coffee, probably something outside like this. Yeah. Um, something with like more interesting lighting. Um, so I'll go ahead and click match image now. And what that does is it'll match the lighting of the photo to the lighting in your scene, and it'll match the perspective of the photo to your scene. So that'll like put them together and make it look like this realistic thing. Like it actually belongs there that, because that's another thing I've noticed. Like a lot of times perspective is just wrong when people try to use these images. Um, but I'll kind of move it roughly where I want. I'll zoom in a little because the point here is that, I'm going to use this for like a basis, but I'm going to bring this into Photoshop where I make my real tweaks. And so I'll put it roughly where I want it because like I don't have to get it a hundred percent accurate here. Um, so that looks, that looks more or less right. Um, so that is fine. But now for the actual material on the cup, I'll click on the materials tab and search plastic. Cause I know I want this cup to be some kind of hard plastic. And these all look pretty similar, not including the color, but they all behave a bit different. Like this one obviously has the wrinkles, but I noticed this one has like, is a bit more transparent, but I want something with a, uh, like a hard surface to it. So I know I like this plastic. I'll go ahead and drop it onto the root folder. So it applies to both the lid and the body. Um, but I'll go ahead and open that up. And those are linked together now, but if you wanted to break that link, you could select one of them, go to the material and then break it. But I don't really need to do that right now. But what I do want to do is change the base color because I want it to be like a white cup. So I'll click that and grab an eyedropper tool and try to somewhat match the environment a little. Uh, and that looks good to me. So for actually placing the graphic, all you have to do is click on the place image on model and then find your image and it will place it. And so I'll scale it down a little. Sometimes you got to select it again. Um, but yeah, I'll put that roughly where I want. Looks good to me. And you could change more features like the opacity and roughness, but for the most part, it's usually fine. But that is looking good. And now I think I, yeah, let me move it up a little bit. So now what I want to do is actually render a rough draft of it. So I'll go ahead and click render and I'll change the settings to draft on this one because these are all uh, kind of self-explanatory, but like a low, medium and high and then ultra, like the, the time is slowly increasing on each one, but ultra is such a small difference from high that honestly, I don't even really recommend it. It takes forever to render, um, but I'll go ahead and render a draft. I'll change the resolution to just a quarter. And I don't need a PSD right now. I just need a PNG and I'll go ahead and render that. And once that's done, I can go ahead and open that image to show you what it looks like. Uh, honestly, I think that's fine. Like it's obviously low quality, but for a rough draft of the render, I think that looks pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. So I'll just do another one now. That's the higher quality version. So I will change from draft to but like I mentioned, ultra is kind of just a time sink, not really worth it. So I'll change to high resolution. I'll go ahead and full 
and I want a PSD this time because whereas a PNG is just a flat image, a PSD has a lot of layers on it so you can toggle different things and you can really get more control over what you're photoshopping. So I'll select PSD and I'll name it Untitled 02. I'll go ahead and render that. So the PSD just saved out. I'll go ahead and open it. And here you can see all the layers I was talking about. So if you wanted to get more like finite control over the object, so like if you say you wanted to select just the cup, you could turn on this and you got like a clown pass and then one with the ground plane and then one with depth and one with, so like you have the rendered image and then the rendered image denoised just the background and then some just fill layer. So you just have a bit more control over what you're about to Photoshop. And so using this, you can make a super realistic mock-up. Like it already looks pretty good before any tweaks have been added. So this gives like a solid starting point to then make something pretty realistic.